Hi, everybody. This is Todd Krieger. So uh, today I want to talk to you uh, and continue my talks on gaslighting. This time it's moving forward, building healthy relationships after gaslighting. So I've talked about using therapy and the benefits of therapy and, uh, and other aspects of uh, recovery uh, from gaslighting. But let's assume now that you are you have the support that you needed, which is really important. Uh, as a matter of fact, even when I'm talking about today, you want to continue to build a network of people that is so opposite of what you went through with the gaslighting. These are people, these are your people that, uh, that fill you up, that allow you to express you, that um, you uh, are validated by these people. This is everything you, you didn't get in, in a relationship with a gaslighting person. Um, so hopefully you're already surrounding yourself with these kinds of people and you're starting to get the beginnings of, I am okay. Or I remember what it felt like to be okay before I was in that gaslit relationship. Some people, um, they really um, were doing fine until they had their gaslighting relationship. Sometimes they grew up in a gaslighting kind of family, so that makes it a little harder. But you are hopefully now surrounding yourself with people, professional and non-professional, that validate you, that make you feel real. Um, and so in terms of building relationships, it becomes now, and this is what I do when I work with people in this situation, becomes now life becomes an adventure. It is a jump into the unknown especially if you grew up in a family where you weren't validated and you weren't made to feel real. Oh, your experiences weren't made to feel real. Okay. But even in their experiences when <clears throat> you did have a, you did have a healthier family, but you've been in a relationship for a while with a gaslighter, you can literally forget what it's like and begin to identify with yourself as someone who, um, through the eyes of the gaslighter, you know, someone who uh, is, is invalid, who isn't enough, isn't good enough. So now you're out of it. You're starting to get the feeling of I am okay. You're surrounded by people that make you feel that way more and more and more. I think the most important thing I do with people is to recognize now that you you are on an adventure in the sense of the unknown. You're jumping to the unknown. You, continue, uh, ask, you continually ask yourself, what do I feel? What's my experience? What do I need? So again, I mean, the first relationship that has to heal is between you and yourself. And whereas with the guest lighter, you learn to deny your experience. Now you spend as many moments of the day being inquisitive about yourself, interested about yourself. What do I feel? What do I want? What is making me feel good? What is making me feel bad? You start to realize that selfish isn't a dirty word. That you have to be selfish. You have to think about yourself. I discriminate between the words selfish and self-absorbed. Uh, self-absorbed, most people that are victims of gaslighting are not going to naturally be self-absorbed. Gaslighters will be naturally self-absorbed. People that are with gaslighters tend to be more sensitive and tuned in and um, that's usually how they're also the prey of someone who's a gaslighter. So I'm not really too worried about you being self-absorbed. I'm more concerned about you being selfish enough. And so you start to look at your future relationships and your current relationships as like a learning laboratories or gymnasiums to help you develop the selfish muscle. Um, again, I'm not too concerned about you being self-absorbed. I'm not concerned about you suddenly being a thoughtless human being. That's not usually the case. It's really more about stay, be, continuing to be selfish. One thing I find about people that are victims of gaslighting, even when they're out of that relationship, they have to watch for their people-pleasing tendencies, their overly adaptive tendencies. And so it's really important for you to ask, am I adapting too much? Am I choosing to yield to somebody's needs today? Because I think in this particular situation, that is what's best. Or am I just on automatic doing this old pattern 
that was definitely accentuated with the gas lighter where I just kind of yield adapt. I don't, you know, I'm not, it's not really a choice. I automatically in a reflexive way adapt. That's what you want to be aware of. Am I choosing to yield if I'm not being selfish? Because I want you to think about you more. That's what you have to do. Your relationships in the current, your new relationships, um, your healthier relationships, the relationships of your future, they're going to be more of a give and take. They're more of your perspective, your reality matters, and the other person's perception and reality matters as well. And it's not black and white. You know, sometimes things get messy because when you're with friends and when you're with an intimate partner, uh, you're different. You have different wants and desires and preferences. So I, I, what I'm trying to say is, in terms of building healthy relationships after gaslighting, your major thing is to think about, I need to be selfish as well as thoughtful. I need to be sensitive to me as well as sensitive to the other. And I need to, sometimes it means that I need to frustrate the other person. Not that my intent is to frustrate you. It's just an inevitable thing that happens when two people that are different are trying to be true to themselves. Compromise is needed, but that's a choice. Remember, it's a choice. So you are now being in relationships where you choose to be kind. You can choose to put your needs aside, but it's not an automatic anymore. And those people that will be the, the, your your life mates, your life friends, your soulmates, those are the people that could handle you frustrating and disappointing them sometimes. This is very, very important. The willingness to frustrate and disappoint others gives you permission to be yourself, to be healthfully selfish. You know, that's, that's really very, very important. I'm trying to think of a good example, but you know, the first thing that pops into my head, because I wasn't thinking about couples, is my own relationship where there are times when I want to do A and my wife wants to do B. And there are times that we do it my way. There are times we do it her way. But there's a discussion. But there's a feeling okay about me validating my difference from her. And so you want to really continue to develop your own I, your own individuality. And the we gets created because you're choosing to think of the other person as well as you. But every situation is different. Every context is different. And even if you choose to yield, you're not invalidating you. And hopefully this other person isn't either. They might say, yeah, I know you really want this and you have a right to want that, but I really would like this. I would really like you in this particular case to come over to my side. And you could say, yeah, I, I will. In this case, I could see why that's important. But there's no automatics. So in terms of recovering... Um, it's it's important to continue to probably get some therapy, some good help. Um, you just want to make sure that you can be that full individual, that being in a relationship does never have to mean ever giving up you or giving up the truth about you. And that, that you know, relationships become areas where there's compromise, but you could also practice taking up space in that relationship, expressing what you need and what you want and what you feel, and what you're thinking. And that, that the people that are, like I said, and I'm repeating myself, but I want to, people that are in your life for life, those are the people that can be flexible enough. We know gaslighters aren't flexible. They're not flexible enough to even look at their own part in the problem. And you need people that um, can own their own stuff, their own, their own, you know, take responsibility for themselves. They, they have to be people that can make room for you, even if it means that they can't always get agreement or get what they want and that they are empathetic and validating. 
That's what I wanted to say. Use those people in your life to continue to blossom into who you really are. And it's a wonderful way to discover who your best friends are, the people that you really want to spend a lot of time with. Those are those people where you could be you, more and more of you. Thanks for listening. This is Todd Krieger, making the world safe for love.